The unexpected climax of Blink Twice is both exhilarating and tragic. Blink Twice, directed by Zoe Kravitz and co-written with that, Feigenbaum, has received mostly excellent reviews. This is due to more than just Kravitz's film's outstanding ensemble. This psychological thriller delves deep into several disturbing themes, mostly due to the appalling actions committed by tech magnate Slater King and his associates towards Frida, Jess, Sarah, and the other island visitors. As the film draws to a close, Frida and Sarah figure out what's happening. They find out that the snake venom reverses the amnesic effects of the perfume. Frida and Sarah, frightened by the nightly attacks and subsequent gaslighting by Slater and his companions, surreptitiously provide snake venom to the other women on the island before taking action against their tormentors. Last year, Frida and Sarah were on the island, and Frida recalled that she and Sarah had attacked Slater, Vic, and the others, murdering a few of them. After an altercation with Frida, he destroys his mansion by knocking over a candle. After she takes him out, Blink twice flashes ahead to show that Frida has taken over as CEO of Slater's firm, and he is finally able to put the past in the past. The end of Sarah's story. After Sarah and Frida begin to recall what happened to them, they decide to battle their attackers as a team. Frida rescues Slater from his burning home instead of murdering him. Despite Sarah's assurances that Frida is capable, she is conspicuously absent from the last scene of Blink twice. It appears that Sarah had no interest in participating in Frida's scheme to turn the tables on Slater and cause him to forget his own recent history, given her absence. Going back to her life would have meant reliving the tragedy that happened on the island, but Sarah probably wanted nothing more than to return to it. Sarah probably didn't want to keep being near Slater as it would prolong her healing process. On top of being risky and susceptible to suspicion, she could not have approved of Frida's idea. Distancing herself from Slater King was probably Sarah's first move in getting over his actions. After Sarah and Frida departed the island, it's unknown whether she would remain in contact with her or if she went on to feature in another reality program. Is Frida's scheme going to work? As CEO of Slater's firm now, Frida keeps adding snake venom to his vaporizer to control him. The question that remains, though, is how long this strategy can last. After all, Frida isn't just making sure Slater forgets, she's also keeping Rich, Slater's therapist, from remembering anything. Although Frida may exact retribution by using Slater's poison against him, she risks having her conscience tormented by the guilt she feels for murdering Jess and abusing her. Everyone is looking up to Frida now that she is in a position of leadership. Someone will probably figure out what she's doing very soon once they notice anything is amiss. Meanwhile, Slater's habit of smoking his vape isn't suspicious as he's always done it, and no one would notice anything out of the ordinary if Frida were to add the forgetting serum to his vape. Since Frida is now Slater's wife as well, she has complete control over the situation and no one is likely to notice her behavior for a long time. The factors that cause Stacy's anger toward Frida. Stacy would be able to see clearly what Slater has been up to, and Frida thought that by giving her the snake venom, she and Sarah would be better able to fight back against him and his friends. Frida, on the other hand, made Stacy furious by letting her recall anything at all. Even though we don't know much about her background, it appears that Stacy would prefer to ignore her trauma and its after effects than face them head on. Stacy could have aided Frida if she wanted to, but she was happy to continue helping Slater and live in thoughtless bliss nonetheless. It is clear from Stacy's behavior that not every woman is on board with feminism. Gina Davis's character was only trying to keep herself safe. Even after realizing the truth, Stacy wanted to run away from the circumstance and her history, rather than fight back. Instead of accepting reality, she prefers to wallow in self-denial. Stacy turned her back on Frida, Sarah, and the other women who needed her assistance because she was alright with what Slater and his pals were doing. This made her a victim and an accomplice. Real forgiveness does not exist. Not only does Channing Tatum's Blink twice have themes of forgiveness and moving on from traumatic experiences, but so does Slater, even if the film does not excuse his acts. He feels guilty about his own ignorance and forgetfulness over certain events involving his father. Slater concludes that forgiveness cannot exist as it requires the forgiven to forget their past. Forgiveness remains elusive so long as recollection persists. Forgetting is a gift, is a sentence that appears many times throughout the film. It is better to forget than to forgive, according to Slater. It would appear that Slater is not making the effort necessary to forgive himself, despite his claims that he is in treatment. Because it restores a person's complete life, forgetfulness, in his view, is more powerful than forgiveness. The trauma they endured no longer holds them back. They can live their lives freely. Slater sees this as beneficial, despite the fact that it grants him the authority to harm people without their knowledge or permission. For Slater, both the abused and the abuser gain by forgetting. Thanks for watching, and if you're new to channel subscribe and click the bell, so you don't miss out latest videos of Media Breakdown.